Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. Uh, I want to talk about um, funerals. Uh, funerals is a big part of pastoral ministry and being a pastor and I just want to talk about how to conduct a funeral um, and um, I hope this is a help to you really. Um, first of all, I would say that if it's your parishioner, uh, it's important to go and visit uh, the families that are bereaved. Uh, so try and visit. Secondly, the funeral parlour that's involved in the funeral will contact you and they will give you the date and the details of when the funeral is. Then you need to arrange with the family uh, a meeting as to the details about the funeral. Now this can be very difficult. If they're a Christian family they're quite happy to choose the hymns and it to be quite a spiritual affair and, and no problem. But if it's a non-Christian family it's going to be very difficult because they will have expectations about the way they see the funeral. And so If you're doing the funeral um, at your church, then they need to realise that you're willing to accommodate them, but at the same time it is a church and you have a responsibility to honour God in that church. For example, if they want rock music in the funeral, um, you know, and they don't want hymns, then you're going to have to put your foot down and at least say, well, you know, there's got to be some kind of spiritual input. All right. In other words, the, there's, the, there is a conflict often with non-Christian families when they want to use church for funerals. Some families will let you come up with all the ideas about how the funeral should be done. Some families will be quite strong on the way they want it. Those families that are quite strong, you've got to be accommodating to them because you're there to serve and, and help them. But at the same time, they need to realise there is a, a no-go area, that that you are a minister of the gospel, and if they want it in church, then it's you've got to respect that. Um, so, when you go to visit the family, go um, listening to them. They want to talk about their loved one to you, and it'll mean a lot to them for it and it's a privilege for you to hear the grief and, and the things that they say about the loved one. So you, you need to enter into the pain and listen to what they say. Um, some families might not know what to do. Uh, they're so hurt, so not used to the kind of situation. It might need you to take control a little bit and say, well, would you like this hymn? Would you like that hymn? Would you like such a cousin to step up at the front and share a little bit and you need to take control a little bit just to help them through it the main thing about a funeral and this is important the main issue about a funeral sociologically psychologically is basically you, you're giving people structure and closure um, you know when the whole world falls apart and they're just in a mess because their loved ones died, to have someone who can just organise the service and give it that structure helps them in that grieving process. So you're playing a very important role there of, of giving structure to a very difficult situation. That's lost structure. All right? So that's the first thing. So everything that you do from beginning to end hymns, reading, walking with the coffin, giving the dismissal of the coffin, whatever, is giving that family the structure in order to grieve, right? So that's very important. So you're playing a very important role in, just in that alone. But the main thing for you as a minister, as a pastor, is you need to, you, you're there to communicate two things. The love of Christ and the offer of Christ. Okay? 
the love of Christ and the offer of Christ. You're sharing the love of Christ by being a servant of these people. And well, that's what you are. You're serving them, whether they're Christian or non-Christian. You're serving them. And you're helping them. And whether they're Christian or non-Christian, they'll value that. They will value it so much uh, that you're willing to be there for them and help them. So, uh, make sure that when you visit the family, that you discern where they're at. Do they need a bit of help in organising the funeral? Or are they clear about what they want? Is it reasonable what they want? Can it be done? Is it doable? All right. You need to think about making sure whether the funeral parlor uh, or yourself as a church can provide an organist. You need to make think about if you're going to sing hymns, are the people that can sing the hymns, if it's a non-Christian family and you've got a few hymns, will they know the hymns? You've got to think about these things. Um, the structure of the service, the order of the service, work it out. You need to liaise with the um, with the funeral parlour. They might have a package where they will print the information you need to uh, liaise with them and give them the details so that they can print the inf uh, a leaflet for the day with a picture of the spouse on. Or it might be you they they haven't got a package for that and the, the the family want you to do that or would like you to do that and then you could get your people to type up a piece of paper with a picture of the loved one etc so you know you need to liaise with the funeral parlor about what they're doing and what you can do okay um so visit the family be sensitive to where they're at and meet the need of where they're at if they can't have no idea what to do in the funeral service give them some ideas and encourage them along if they know what to do let them do it as far as you can but just make them realize that you are a minister of the gospel do that in a gentle way and they'll respect that and appreciate that but they'll make it clear to you that this is their funeral and they they want it their way so you got to be there's got to be a, a bit of a compromise um that's important because as we're getting more and more secular in the uk and america and, and other countries there's going to be more more um more of people wanting to do the funerals the way they want and you've got to realize that yeah you're there to serve but you're also a minister of the gospel and if you let secularization into the funeral process in a church then there's not going to be any spiritual meaning there and, and so the whole thing is from a church's point of view you might not as well be involved uh, so you need to push a little bit to maintain the spiritual input and the Christian input in that service and if they have asked you as a minister, then they need to respect that you are a minister of the gospel. All right, that's important. It's an important. It's important to realise that because I, I think it's a trend that it, it will get worse and worse. The secularisation of funerals. Okay. Um, when you're when you've done your visit. Um, and you organize the funeral uh, on the day uh, what I would do the funeral would come to the it would either come to the parlor I've got to go it would either come to the parlor uh, it would either come to the church or it would come to the uh, uh, to, to, to the building wherever it is I would meet the coffin and I would pray and then I would lead into the church or building gotta go uh, I'll pick up on this this is part one I'll pick up on the, how to do a funeral so I would lead that I would lead the coffin in um, you've got to take control because people are looking to you how to conduct themselves so be confident and lead the coffin in and people will want to know whether to see and then you tell them to sit 
right? After you've prayed or done whatever, your benediction or whatever, they say, please be seated. So you need to tell them when to rise, when to sit. You need to indicate to them what to do, all right? Be confident and clear and be in command, all right? All right. There's lots more to talk about the funeral and how to conduct it uh, in the prayer and messages and all, all things like that. We'll, we'll talk about that later in another video. Alright? Take care. See you later. I've got to go. Um, Alright?